What's happening guys and welcome back. Today is the day we are going to rebuild my gaming PC in the Enthu 719. Now there's a couple of things I wanna go over real fast before we actually get started. The first being, I never mentioned at the bottom here that it's mini ITX. So if you're running a dual system, the second system down here in the bottom has to be mini ITX. Additionally, uh, somebody brought up a good point in the overview video that there's no discussions really about AIO support in this case. Now, a lot of that is because this isn't designed for AIOs. This is meant for just full bore water cooled systems, but it's a good point. So there is a possibility that somebody's going to want a primary and secondary system being cooled by an AIO. And I have a little bit of a video going over what I think you could and couldn't do. Now, I don't have any ways to really demonstrate it. I don't have 360 AIOs. The 360 millimeter rads are in builds right now. But I do try to show how I think it will work and how you could possibly do it off. But to give you a quick summary, you could easily do a 360, a 240 up top for the primary system right here but the secondary system is gonna be limited. You need really long tubing either to reach up here to the back or over here where you could fit a 120 or a 140. If you're using a discrete card, a graphics card with this second system, you can't use a 240 down here. Uh, you're just gonna run into issues because the graphics card is gonna, gonna get in the way. The only way to really do it, because side intake is out as well, is hopefully run a, a tube that's long enough to reach this front panel where you could probably fit a 360, a 240, a 280, and still have maybe a couple spots in here for hard drive support, but I go into that in further detail in the other video, so check that out if you are curious about AIO support in this case. Now obviously before we can build, we actually have to tear the other system apart, so I'm going to pull as much out of there as I can before I start draining the loop, and we will resume this i will be back to check out to, to show progress uh, once we get everything kind of started and pulled apart All right, so taking the blocks apart was fairly simple. Putting them back together was a little more challenging for me. I actually screwed both of them up uh, in different manners, but uh, did take them apart. They were gunked just a little bit. It wasn't actually too bad. Now it's time for the most important part, 
signaling that this is actually truly beginning underway. It is time to take this board and put it in to the Enthu 719. All right, all of those are in, and now it should just be a matter of just putting this build together. The rest of it should be fairly straightforward, but we're gonna take this out to the living room, and I will talk to you back in here probably when we are just about done.
And here is the completed build and it's mostly finished stage. I might make a couple more tweaks here, mostly related to the top of the reservoir pump combination, but uh, we will, we'll see about that. Uh, for the most part, it's an easy case to build in. There's a lot of good layout features in there. There's a plenty of space to work with. You can fit a lot of radiator combinations in here. But if, you follow, if you've been following along with this on social media and other videos that I've posted, uh, there are some things to be aware of. But for the most part, you can do a lot of stuff in here. Obviously, there's a lot of room for a pump res combo or a separate res and pump. And there's just all different kinds of configurations. You can put a radiator along the side intake. You can put them on the top, the front, along the bottom. You're really limited only by the type of hardware that you want. And if you're using mechanical drives, that's where you'll find most of your limitations as that occupies a good portion of the space that you would otherwise be using for radiators and or fans. And as you saw, I, if you've been following along, I did make some changes. The first change is I went to slim radiators along the top and the front. And this was because with the top, if you have anything that's really wider than maybe 27, 28 millimeters, uh, you impact the ability to put on the top panel with the radiator mounted to the top. Now you can still do it with fans and then round, mount the radiator to the fans, but if you have RGB fans and you're trying to show them inside of the build, that defeats that purpose. If you're using Noctua's or EK Vardar's and you don't care if they're seen or not, you have pretty much unlimited thickness of radiator up top. But if you're trying to show them, you're limited. This is, to me, a little bit of a design flaw, and this harkens back to the fact that there's no radiator mount in here, which is a, de a departure from the norm with Fantex, as both the Enthu Evolve and the Evolve X have those. Be that as it may, it can be made to work, and ultimately, it's just up to you to understand that. But again, be aware that the top panel mounting points are pretty much right next to the radiator mounting points. So width is important there. The front width is really dependent as well on the top radiator and if you have one in the bottom. If you don't have a radiator down here in the bottom, it gives you a lot more wiggle room. If there's one thing that I wish they would have done on this case in the front that they did on the Evolve X is have a set of rail going all the way up and down. I mentioned this in my video talking about where the build is, uh, but the Evolve X has a rail system that pretty much goes all the way from the top to the bottom with only a little bit of a break in in between certain points to help with rigidity. This doesn't have that. This has very specific points for especially the 140. So you really can only put like a 280 up very high or very low. If you try it, there's no real in between. If there was a little bit of an in between, I could have kept the thicker radiator with the thicker top and had the ports up top like I wanted them. I initially had adjusted it so that the ports were in the bottom, but I just didn't like the way that route went with the tubing so I've ultimately decided to go with slims all the way around and that just helps with the symmetry of the build. So a, a rail going all the way up and down for the 140 mounting points would have been nice to see. Another thing you may run into with the top with the front panel connectors is because they're horizontal instead of vertical if you have a SD card reader like this where the SD card sticks out of the top it won't fit in there. You have to use one of your back panel ones, which is a minor inconvenience uh, because I do like just being able to put that in there while sitting here at my desk. But ultimately it is a minor point and not something that I think should be a deal breaker for anybody. Uh, beyond that, the only way to access the dust filter as I showed er in the earlier uh, overview of this case is this front panel has to come off. Again, very minor. You do have to pull the front, the top panel back a little bit. You could pop this off get the dust filter out. Would have been nice if you didn't have to do that, but ultimately that's how it's been designed. Another thing to keep in mind, if you have thicker radiators up at the top, you're going to really have a tough time getting to fan headers, RGB headers, EPS connectors up at the top of the motherboard. Because as you see, even with a slim radiator, it hangs down and is just barely above where the memory is sitting. So if you, if you don't have everything connected first, you might have a bad time. So I definitely recommend connecting any fan headers, any RGB headers, your, your CPU power before you install the radiator that will help you in terms of not having to remove it to get things connected. Overall though, 
the case is solid. I saw some complaints that the top, this, this uh, tempered glass panel is does not close properly uh, in a lot of people's uh, uh, reviews of this case. And I had the same thing until I populated this with a bunch of hardware. And now it actually sticks pretty good. Open. But now it just closes flush. There's no issue with it whatsoever. When it's empty though, the, the panel tends to list a little bit, it seems and has and it has to be you kind of have to lift up on the glass to close it all the way and i have not had that since i populated it with with hardware so that's something worth noting i like the ek uh, quantum kinetic tbe 300 pump reservoir combination i think especially with this plexi the rgb illumination is really nice obviously i have an led strip in the front of the case i also have two standard RGB halos fan frames on these Noctua fans that I've installed. So there's plenty of illumination in here. Uh, maybe too much, some might say. Overall, I like how well lit up this system ultimately is. As you can see, I have a neon RGB strip down here at the bottom. This is connected to the case panel. So this and these PC cooler fans up top, as well as the, the rear digital halos fan, they're all on the same channel. So if I change the color, they all do the same. Thing. And so that helps me set the perimeter lighting in a nice way. So I really like how that turned out. Overall, it's still pretty spacious. There's a lot of room still inside of this case. The neon RGB strips have done exactly what I wanted to do. Once I figure out how to really get them lined up, as you see, there's one that is routed from the back of the case and then takes a sharp turn up. That is the benefit to those, R those neon strips. Uh, you can really make some things happen there. There's actually another one in the back, if you've seen in the other footage, that is sitting just above the SSD tray. I think at some point I'm gonna get an SSD with some RGB lighting that'll illuminate that back section a little bit more. Yes, I like RGB lighting. I think it helps bring out the build, especially if you use the proper lighting. I don't do the unicorn vomit, I, just don't worry. Now these PC cooler fans on the bottom and along the side, they are controlled with an external remote. Uh, it's actually really nice. The only downside to that is they default to the rainbow effect whenever you turn your computer on. They don't remember the setting that you were on last time. Minor issue, but still something worth noting if you were looking at those. I will cover the PC cooler fans, the EK pump reservoir, and the neon RGB strips in separate videos. They are interesting products, and I think if used properly, can really bring out a lot in your build. I have continued to use soft tubing, but in this case, I've added a lot of uh, 45 and 90 degree fittings to help route the tubes a little bit better. And I think for the most part, it actually helps significantly. And I've removed all the EK Vardar fans out of this build. The EK Vardar fans are nice, but they're loud, and I don't need the brute force that they bring. These PC cooler fans, they do exactly what I need them to do. My system is idling at about 32 to 35 degrees Celsius right now, with the ambient room temperature about 25 degrees. And the low temperatures when I'm playing a game, it peaks at 70, but it's generally in the upper 50s to low 60s when I'm playing games. Uh, I have not actually put it under a significant load yet, but I'm not that terribly concerned about it. This configuration is aimed mostly at being able to run these fans really low so that there's less noise, and I've been able to do that. All the fans are running at generally about 25 to 30%, so they're all about in that 500 to 700 RPM range. I have more intake than exhaust, so there's positive pressure in there, which should help keep dust out even more and the dust filters in the front and the bottom will also help with that. Oh, and then the side intake, there's dust filters there. Overall thoughts on this case, it's big and there's a lot you can do with it, but there's also some restrictions and you wanna be aware of those restrictions before you go in. So for people who wanted to use a dual system, you can only use one power supply there's, and that pretty much limits you, I believe to Fantex Revolt power supply. I could be wrong, there might be other dual power supplies out there, but. Fantex is really marketed theirs with this case. So if you're going to do a dual system, there's not a, play, a way to do it with two power supplies. It's just not possible. You can fit a lot of radiators in here, but with the, sl the slimness of the radiator is going to be the determining factor. But you still have a ton of space. As you can see, I have a 300 millimeter uh, reservoir in here that still leaves a lot of space between the top of the case. Clearance behind the top fans and radiator can be an issue that you want to be aware of. 
But other than that, there's not a whole lot of issue with getting in and doing things in this case. It's very spacious. Everything went in pretty well as I was hoping other than the radiators, which was also my fault as well. And I'm pretty satisfied with the way it looks. So that is my look at the build at a build inside of the Enthu 719. There might be some more changes down the road. I'm thinking in spring of maybe going to AMD's Ryzen R9-3900X to give the extra horsepower for video editing and such, but we'll see how that goes. That's still a pretty pricey direction to go with this. And the 8700K is still a very good CPU for video editing and for streaming. It will get the job done. The build though I think looks good. I think everything in the end has turned out pretty satisfactory. Again, I, I'm kind of unsure about this tube here. It's got a very, 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 very slight hint of a kink. So I may switch that top fitting to a 45 degree, cut the tube down a little bit and ease the pressure on it, but we'll see. That being said, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this case, please let me know down in the comments below and I will try to address them as I can get to them. And otherwise, that's it. That's the build. It's done. It's finished. I'm gonna go work on the secondary system now. I'll probably do some video footage on that as well. Uh, as we're moving the, we're getting my secondary system out of the Enthu Evolve and into the Evolve X. So stay tuned for that. And that is it. I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.